Welcome to MGM, I'm Jimmy, and today we'll be talking about the Bamboo Lab's new A1 3D printer. Up front, I am not sponsored, I bought this with my own money, and I can say whatever I want about it. At the end of this video, I will compare ease of use and printing to my old Ender 3 V2, a printer that has been an absolute workhorse for years, and how I feel about moving forward. So, out of the box, that really got me to take a good look at the Bamboo Labs A1. In unboxing the printer, it only comes with a few parts and a handful of screws and accessories. I remember putting my Ender 3 V2 together in 2020, and it probably took a few hours for a brand new person to 3D printing. The Bamboo A1 is a far cry from that. It took a total of 11 or so screws and the printer was ready to go. At least that's what I thought. There's two main components to it. You've got your Z and X axis right here, and then you've got your build plate. And you pretty much hook these two together with some screws and make some connections and you're ready to go. After removing the protective plastic, I then attach the build plate down to the heat bed, and this is all held together by magnets. There's also some notches on the back to let you know that you've got it perfectly in place. From there, you flip the base 90 degrees, and you'll see some screws here that are circled red. You want to take those out, and they provide you the tools to do this with, so very easily popping those screws off. The next step is really easy. You just simply take the printer frame, and then we are going to attach the base housing to that frame. There's slots on both sides. You just simply slide it in that first slot at a diagonal angle, and then it will safely go down all the way to the bottom. From here, we'll cut some zip ties and remove two foam paddings from the printer frame. There's seven zip ties in total, so you can count those as you work your way around to be sure that you get them all. The next step is to remove the Y-axis cover here, and you just simply slide that out, and there'll be some screw holes that are labeled with a green circle. This will correspond to a bag that you have that has the base housing screws on there, and I believe there's 10 of these, and you just simply install those screws. Once complete, we will slide that build plate to the front. There'll be a few more screws here as well that'll have a green circle, and we simply put the screws in there as well. When finished, we simply put the Y-axis plate back on, and that just slides back in and snaps into place. When finished, we will take our printer and flip it on its back, kind of hanging off the table, if you will. And you want to be sure that your build plate doesn't snap back very quickly, so I'm kind of holding that with my thumb. Putting this on the table edge, and we're just going to work on a few screws on the bottom and connect our uh, connectors. With a look at the bottom here, this is where you want to be extremely careful with a USB-C connector here. You really want to be sure that this is seated fully into that USB-C connection. There is a screw on this little plastic piece that will hold this into place that is already there that needs to line up to the hole, but what you're going to see as this video goes forward, I have some problems when I first started printing and it all stemmed from this USB-C connection because it was not completely all the way up into the connection port that was causing some issues and I had to troubleshoot and try to figure out what was going on and it was all because of this piece. So take particular care to follow the instructions and just be sure that that USB-C gets up in and locked into place snugly, do your other connections, and then tighten down your screw. The connections are clearly labeled for your axis, uh, yellow, green, and then there is also a connection for your camera. 
Once complete, flip the printer back up and then you're gonna angle the LCD screen so that is facing you. You're then gonna install a purge wiper on the side and this is where my second mistake took place which we'll cover later in the video. The instructions do not mention anything about moving the tool head or the extruder or anything like that. It is moved in the picture, but I followed the instructions as they were written and I went ahead and installed this purge wiper and this is what led to problem two, which we will cover later in the video. And believe it or not, that was all the setup that really needed to be done. I can plug in the power cable, put it where I'm going to print, and turn this baby on. Again, from a setup perspective, this was extremely simple. My Ender 3 sitting right beside this, you had to do so much more on the Ender 3 a few years ago. You had to essentially build the entire printer. This thing was very streamlined, the directions felt easy to follow, although a bit inaccurate, and you're going to see more about that in just a minute. So the printer fires up for the first time. I go ahead and attach the filament clip to the top. I do run the PTFE tube into the extruder, and then I go ahead and run some filament in there as well, all part of the directions, and this is supposed to get us ready for our first print. And it's here we'll go to the sound, and you can just experience what I experienced and how it just did not sound right. So yeah, pretty crazy listening to that for the first time. Something was obviously wrong, and I had no idea what. After receiving errors that there was a tool head malfunction and the axis can't home, I also couldn't install any updates or anything like that, so I had to do a lot of research here, and it led to a lot of frustration. Come to find out this piece right here. This is the purge wiper that you install, and I had mine screwed on while the extruder was just in its normal position. And I did see in the picture where they had moved the extruder to the center before adding this piece. That's not something that they called out, but apparently in screwing this on with the extruder in the position it was in, it was causing it to hang. After moving the extruder over and reinstalling the purge wiper, it was able to move freely, which solved my problem. And with a few calibrations, we should be ready to print. It's going through its auto leveling feature, which I really like about this printer. I no longer have to manually level my bed almost on every single print. This is really fantastic. So the printer will go through and check various points on the bed to be sure that it's level and make some adjustments. And then we should be off to the races, or so I thought. I decided to load up the Benchy on the SD card and go to print, and unfortunately, there was no filament coming out, which is my second issue. And at this point, I started to get very frustrated because I just spent a lot of time trying to research and figure out where I went wrong with following the directions. And now there's no filament coming out after I've got everything hooked up. Very, very frustrating. I can't tell you how many times I pulled the filament off and then loaded it back and pushed it through doing exactly what this was telling me to do, yet when it was time to print, there was no filament coming out. What the instructions don't tell you is that you have to go through a filament loading process on the printer screen, manually pushing the filament through and then going through a few steps to actually get it loaded. After messing around enough to get this fixed, the printer was ready to go and I fired up my first Benchy, which is a test print and gosh did this thing go fast. It was really noisy and I can already tell and messing around with the printer a little bit that the noise does increase with the speed, but I am not sure what was preloaded on this for the speed, but it was absolutely incredible. I was really astonished at how the technology has evolved in just the last few years to be able to print at this speed. And this is in real time what you're seeing. It is moving very quickly. This Benchy took 21 minutes to create. 
And when the print was complete, you can simply just pop the bed off. The print was very easy to remove. This bed has a little bit of flex in it, which is also really nice because I'm not scraping it off. And the print quality of this was actually very good. So you have to keep in mind this is stock settings and this did print in about 21 minutes which is absolutely amazing the top layer is a little wonky i think but overall this print came out pretty smooth and can be dialed in and maybe slowed down a little bit to get a finer quality but how does that compare to my ender theory my workhorse over the last few years hundreds if not thousands of print hours. I've had this thing running pretty much constantly for years and it's had some difficult times. I've had to troubleshoot this machine numerous times. I've had to replace some parts that I've worn out and things like that, but it is still printing just fine. With this particular Ender 3, I load my file to an SD card, pop it in the machine. I do use a glue stick because the bed is glass and needs that extra adhesion. I then go through the manual leveling process, which to me is one of the biggest pains about these older printers, using a sheet of paper, going to every corner and twisting these knobs, and doing it over and over again to be sure that you get a perfect level bed. I've gotten really good at this over the years, and in no time at all, I am printing at my standard speed here, which is about 50 millimeters per second. As always, I stand by watching my first layer to be sure that it goes down and sticks appropriately, and then I will let this go and we will compare the results. The Ender 3 is older and slower, but it is printing out a quality print just like it always had, just using the standard stock settings. About an hour and a half later, the print is complete, and I use my scraper, pop it off the bed, and we looked at this print, and for what it is, I think it came out pretty well. The top layers look good. There are a few issues, I think, on the side of the Benchy that drew my attention. But overall, it's a satisfactory print, in my opinion. And, you know, is it comparable to the Bamboo Labs? So here we have Bamboo Labs on the left and my old Ender 3 on the right. And you can see there was a little bit of distortion on the Ender 3 when you're looking at the base of the ship. Overall, both prints look fairly similar for the most part. I do think that the A1, when you factor in the speed at which it achieved this print, that's really what is mind-blowing to me. Even at a slower print speed, the Ender 3 did have a few issue points, especially on the side of the ship here, but uh, overall, these are pretty comparable prints. The speed of the Bamboo Labs A1 just really stands out. Now there are some other things to take into consideration as well when looking at these newer printers and the slicer software has been uh, night and day from what I was used to using with Cura. This is my first time booting up the Bamboo Labs slicer. The interface is extremely easy to use and my old slicer could not add supports where I wanted them to go. It just added them in general but this software has a lot of settings. Now, I'm not one to go very in-depth on settings. I honestly don't change a whole lot when it comes to settings. I may add some supports or things like that to make the printing a little easier, but I need some more stairs for a game that I'm playing, and I had a very difficult time printing this file on my Ender 3 V2 because it would add supports pretty much all over the place, and in removing those supports, they were difficult to remove, and it would uh, break the print as well and it was just a very hard file to print. So we're gonna fire this up on this one. I'm gonna add in tree supports, which I think are very cool. We're gonna try that out and see what we get. With the A1, everything is done wirelessly on my network, so I can send the file to print from the slicer, which is extremely nice. I no longer have to put it on an SD card and walk it over to my printer, which is in a completely separate area of the house. And then it's also got this camera on it to where I can sit here and either watch the print, make sure the first layer goes down okay. Uh, I, I don't have to get up and go check on the printer unless, there's, unless I see something wrong, which is just way cool. 
I do a quick check-in midway through to make sure things are going okay, and at the end, the file comes out very nicely. The supports I added were easy to break off with a pair of pliers, the print did not break in any places whatsoever, and overall I'm very pleased. So what are my overall thoughts on this Bamboo Lab A1? I think it's a good printer. I think it's a excellent printer. It prints fast. I think it gives a good print quality. The instructions certainly missed a few steps, at least in my opinion, with getting the device up and running. In the first few hours, uh, since I had all of those issues, I was really considering sending it back because I was very frustrated. After things smoothed out and the printer was working, it is now just a hands-off kind of a printer and I have been printing my heart out and I really haven't touched it since. Now there's a lot of other printers that are in this space, printers from Elegoo and Prusa and others. I'm sure they are very good as well. I did go with a Bamboo Lab A1 here and I am pleased with the results and I'm looking forward to printing more and adding more to our games in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave me a thumbs up below. You can also leave any comments. I'll try to answer any questions that you may have. As always, a big thank you to the Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now. If you'd like any information on that, a link will be down in the description. Totally optional. If you've watched the video this far, you've done more than enough to support my channel, so thank you so much. We will see you in the next one. Take care.